All right, Maddie, welcome back to the Ask Maddie Show. Matt, we have a lot of good topics today. We're going to be talking about Casper. We're going to be talking about, is David Schwartz an op? Is he <laughs> a CIA operative? We're also going to be talking a little bit about strategies, selling strategies, and maybe barring against your cryptos, if that's a, a something that you know, you're going to be doing, or what does that even look like? Because our team has a lot of questions here regarding strategy, regarding Casper, regarding, I guess we're going to talk about David Schwartz. This is so stupid. But team, we are going to get into the content here. But before we get to that, Matt, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Um, as you guys know, this is one of my favorite things that we do during the week, being able to come on here, interact with you guys, answer your questions. Uh, you know, there's always a variety of topics that we can pick from, but I like picking things that, you know, you guys are passionate about, things you guys want to hear about. So, you know, I'm excited and uh, feeling good this week. Team, become a Crypto Charge member. I'm tired of asking. I just want to see you on the platform, in the community. Link pinned in the comment section down below. It'll take you to our platform. Check us out and start your 30-day free trial so you can join the community and be a strategic investor in crypto as the moment calls for it. We are uh, entering some bullish period in the crypto market, so you don't want to miss out. And if you are young and you can't afford it, go ask your parents because I don't <laughs> think this is something that you should miss out on. I'm, you got to remember, I'm 22 years old here and I'm heavily invested into crypto because I think it's going to change the trajectory of my life. And for some of you young people out there, it will for you too if you're strategic, if you have smart people around you, which we do. And so that is why you need to tap in with us team. And also too, I mentioned this on After Hours, YouTube has been a little shoddy lately with letting our subscribers know that we're premiering shows. So make sure you click the notification bell so you know when we're going live After Hours on Mondays, 7 p.m. Pacific. Of course, Ask Maddie Show, 2.30 p.m. Pacific every Wednesday. So, team, make sure you tap us, tap in with us there uh, if you're not already in the community. But now, Maddie, I've given my spiel. It's time to get into some of your commentary, answering some of the questions the team has for us today. Are you ready? Let's do it. Music says, need Casper analysis in the next Ask Maddie Show. I think Casper is in a downtrend. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's just do it, guys. Uh, you guys know where we do our analysis, and that is on the charts. So let's go ahead and take a look here together, team. Um, as you guys know, one of my big things that I always preach is doing a top-down analysis. So we want to start on a bigger time frame, like a daily, maybe a three-day chart or a weekly chart. Kind of just depends on uh, you know where you're charting. And we want to look at, first of all, just the overall structure. Which way is trend moving, right? You mentioned here that you believe Casper might be on in a downtrend. Now, when we look super objectively left to right, Casper is in a macro downtrend, right? We haven't broken and invalidated that macro downtrend yet. Now, there are a couple of inklings, though, that we are in a much different spot than we were, for example, let's say even in June of 22 or even November of 22. So if we pull this out a little bit here and we look at kind of where this trend, this steep downtrend kind of came to a, a little bit of a screeching halt here, we have some nice price action here that shows that there was some respect of this trend line. We can see that this trend was actually broken in February of 2023. So actually over a year ago with the steep aggressive downtrend was broken. There was a nice floor that came in here too that accompanied that break. So when we look here at this floor, there was a nice floor that was developed in that 2.5, 2.7 cent region. And we've sustained above that floor uh, since we started developing, developing it here in June of 2022. So that's first of all, a very good indicator. Um, having the opportunity at this point the cycle to buy assets that are still near a very key support level that's been developed for let's say 12 18 24 months is a very very big opportunity that you're not going to see a lot of as the cycle progresses um and that's even with some of my swing trades right now that we've talked about with like sushi and alluvium right there's become me more and more limited opportunities to buy those accumulation structures so we look at what's happening here this actually looks quite bullish to me. We have a lot of these support levels holding in here. We also have other minor support levels in here that are providing some uh, important support. So you can see here that we had kind of the top of this pivot zone here. So we developed a little bit of support here in February through March of 23. This was resistance back here in 22. We turned it in resistance again in November 23. And we've currently toying with this area again here. So as we approach this level, we are showing that there is some buyer demand from this price. So 
that to me in itself is very, very bullish. Um, we have also some other indicators here, like this cup and handle pattern. We broke higher. Of course, we've retested the accumulation zone since then, but again, found really strong support in there before moving higher. On a shorter term perspective, we did get rejected from that 786, but we are maintaining on that 236 as well as that major support level right now. So I do think as we enter this next series of bullish impulses for the altcoin market, that will most likely get a pop towards the seven to 10 cent area. We've talked about that major imbalance up there. These Fibonacci's do support us getting up to those prices and even higher in the short term here. But even again, this downtrend here was broken quite a while ago, sharp downtrend broken. Um, and you know, some of these structures don't move up in a straight line. In fact, the more tests that we get in this area like this, showing that there's a lot of uh, buyer demand is actually better and healthier for the long term. We can count this as a very, very strong launch pad. Now, I don't think we're going to see a three or four set Casper again in the future. So if you do want to be a long term Casper holder, I still think this is a fantastic buying opportunity. My rule for the last year and a half has been under five cents is still a good buy. So we're still here. We're still being given that gift. Uh, and I think that we're actually looking very bullish here from a technical perspective. Matty, I have a feeling why under five cents would be a good rule for you, but why is it that under five cents is like an automatic good buy for Casper? Yeah, so we always want to look at risk to reward ratio, right? So we want to say, okay, potential targets using our Fibonacci's, you guys can use other tooling if you find that you know you have a better better time uh, predicting prices or, or finding targets uh, with other tools, but Fibonacci's have worked very well. They're respected in, in a lot of different asset classes. Um, one of the things that I look at though is like, where have we had major resistance? Where is the top of an accumulation zone? And that's been kind of over here in this 5.75 cent region. We had support back here in July of 21. We had uh, support back here in March. And then we turn this into resistance multiple times here on this three day chart. So it's been a very important level to breach. Once we have broken over the top of an accumulation structure, I'm generally not so interested anymore of heavily DCAing into that asset anymore because that means we are now going to be most likely engaging in bullish legs up to go clear out other imbalances. So I want to switch to limit based ordering. So it's not an automatic, easy, hey, under five cents is you know a good buy for us. Now we have to be more tactical, look to buy back in on higher lows and try to capitalize on the volatility of those you know intra week movements versus just that DCA. So you guys can see here very clear top structure here. You guys find this on a variety of assets and that's how you kind of create those parameters for yourself my dca plan is based on top of accumulation bottom of accumulation obviously the lower we can get the better but we still have a tolerance at the top there we're like hey this is still a pretty good buy considering we're looking at targets like 10 and 20 cents and of course over a dollar long term wow matt team that was a lot of value right there and i hope you got some out of that because this zone right here and this happened you know with some of my friends it's like oh casper pumped it's not time to buy casper i gotta wait till it goes lower but what happens is is you miss out on that opportunity you're not paying attention to your charts you're not either dcaing or throwing limit based orders down you know i would rec we would recommend dcaing you know in this zone but even if you're like okay i want to buy at lower prices i'm going to throw down one giant limit order many of you guys don't even do that so maddie that was a lot of value right there and team i hope you like man watch that over again because that was that was awesome uh let's move maddie anything more to say there because i feel like like that gives you like the blueprint for investing like you know yeah. obviously that's that's really the keys i want to give you guys is just take, giving you guys these simple technical tools that really again i don't use 80 percent of the tools that are in trading view here we have sessions where we do now in our discord once a week a live session where i teach you guys how to use these tools do demonstrations you guys can provide your charts in there we can do live feedback you guys have the opportunity to learn this for yourselves. Last thing I want to say about the chart here specifically is like we said, we were in a downtrend, right? Looking at that macro picture. But when we look at the price action from July of 22 forward, we have had a very clean but slow ascending trend line in here. So you can see the touch here in June of 22, again here in December of 22, very nice interactions all the way from October. And then again here in February, and we've been seeing this trend line be very well respected. We see the very similar structure here on XRP. A lot of people ignore these because they're looking at the other huge impulses and they think, well, this is never gonna do it. This is the basis that you create for those larger impulses, right? The wider the base, the higher in space. So I think there's a lot of bullish signs here. You guys can choose to invest or not to invest, but I'm gonna take this golden opportunity and run with it. Krom says, David Schwartz, former CIA employee, one of the first developers of Bitcoin, he knows the four creators of Bitcoin interviewed by Homeland Security in 2013. Why don't you talk about that? Liars. Liars, liars. Yes, I come on, on the internet to where anyone can verify anything to spew lies. 
Um, no, come on. Like, first of all, what are we talking about here? I, I tried to do a quick search of, you know, like this David Schwartz Homeland Security. Like when you search it out, there is a person named David Schwartz, but he works for Homeland Security um, and the like, you know, financial crime sector. But this is not David Schwartz to which I reference, which I would hope you would get out of context there of being the CTO of Ripple and a co-creator of XRPL. Um, we don't know who the creators of Bitcoin are. Um, so I'd love to know what secret book that you've been given that, you know, gives you all the answers that, you know, you know, the creators of Bitcoin. Uh, we know Craig Wright is not a creator of Bitcoin. That was found by the courts recently. So we really don't know. Um, and that's one of the things that I've, I've constantly speculated on is like, you know, as much as I love the decentralized aspect of crypto and I love that Bitcoin kind of provided the, the stage for other uh, altcoin developments. And of course, now, you know, NFT is real world assets, you know, obviously everything that accompanies that. We still, at the end of the day, cannot say that the person who created Bitcoin is some sort of government figure, right? Because it is an anonymous entity. So, you know, to, to speculate so heavily of like, this is what happened in this, you know, he he is one of four people and it happened on this date. Like it's, it's absolute nonsense. There's no basis for it. So, you know, guys, it, there's always going to be comments like this out there. It's going to happen on YouTube and Twitter and everything. So just make sure you guys are always double checking stuff. A quick Google search will tell you that everything that this said, that was said in this comment is absolute garbage. Yeah, Tim, I had to, like, I very rarely, like, bring a, uh, some of these questions that you guys have up to Maddie before the show. And this was one of those because, you know, like, this was, like, very, like, CA operative here. Like, that is very, like, did I not catch, did I not get red-pilled on this? And I wanted, <laughs> I was actually hoping this was true. And, you know, I went to Maddie right now. I'm like, dude, there's no way, right? And uh, we looked at that, and obviously it's false. But, you know, it's always interesting to me to look into things like this because when you start doing deep dives, I was telling Maddie before the show, some of these political commentators and how related they are to CIA, the feds, like it gets very scary, like, you know, the people that you're listening to. Uh, and how close they are, even though they seem to be Maddie a little bit, you know. Oh, you know, I'm very innocent, you know, and I got my, <laughs> you know, whatever. Good insight there. All right. Graham Peters 21 says, you keep talking about when you'll be able to borrow against your crypto, but that doesn't seem to be happening anytime soon. So if that is the case, I'm going to take the profits and run. What are you guys doing? So you actually can right now on some assets take out a loan against your Bitcoin. So it is a possibility. Um, if you're not a U.S. Uh, customer, you can still use Nexo. Nexo was the last standing mm. uh, staking and, and lending exchange out there. Um, and I, I withdrew my funds out of an abundance of caution when we saw everything going down with BlockFi and Celsius and you know everything else. I go, team, listen. I think that Nexo is great. I've done my research. I understand their insurance policy. I understand Bitco. I understand Bitco's balance sheet. Um, you know, and I understood all of the things that were backing up Nexo. And I just said, you know what? Let's just remove them. We can always come back later when they offer a 2.0 product. Um, you know, and they, they still ended up being uh, around here in, uh, for non-US customers. So the, it is still a standing exchange. And there are options for some of the bigger legacy assets to borrow against them right now. What I'm talking about is a a much better situation uh, with borrowing against it in the future. So I think that was a good first run we had with like decentralized lending and decentralized loans against your assets. Um, but I think that it's going to get better after we have a regulated market for that. Uh, when we look at what's going on right now with BlackRock, uh, BlackRock is launching a fund right now, um, and it's a tokenized fund, uh, essentially aiming to take real world assets and, you know, take, put them in a tokenized manner and allow people to invest in those in, in micro shares, right? Um, why would they not want to also create vehicles and products for me to be able to borrow against tokens that represent either value within a crypto ecosystem or a real world asset, right? That's a very stupid thing to leave money on the table for. So, Short term though, yes, let's talk about the reality of it. There isn't a place right now as a US customer that I feel comfortable lending my XRP to uh, or borrowing against my XRP uh, and, and feeling confident that I'm gonna be able to you know, pay it back over years and or whatever the payment schedule ends up being. Um, but in the future, that's most likely gonna be a thing. 99% sure that's gonna be a thing. If that doesn't end up being a thing, what what happens to me, right? Um, it's only a portion of my bag that's a long-term bag, right? I'm still selling huge chunks each cycle. I'm going to be selling a big chunk of XRP this cycle. I'm be selling big chunks of most of my bags this cycle. But even if, let's say, that doesn't end up being the case, and let's say I've held on to this XRP for years and I haven't sold any of it, one, there's no tax implications for not selling and holding, right? If I buy and I hold an XRP, there's no taxable event that's occurring if I don't sell it. So if anything... I just still have XRP at a higher price than I paid for, right? So let's say XRP is at 66, 65 cents now. And, you know, five, six, seven, eight years from now, it's at, let's say, two, $300 per XRP. 
again, we're just talking speculatively <laughs> here. Don't don't run to the comments and be like, you swore, you swore it was going to be two, three hundred dollars. Um, right. But first of all, I have the long term capital gains on that. So I'm going to pay a lesser rate than if I had bought and sold it within a 12 month period. Um, and B, again, I just have long-term portfolio growth, right? It doesn't all have to be about money for today for today. There is something to be said about building long-term value for yourself, but then also capitalize on those short-term cycles. So again, I have no doubt that we're going to see most likely sub five years, but definitely sub 10 years, the ability to borrow against your portfolio. There's no reason why these legacy systems, especially with some congressional definition of digital asset custody, wouldn't want to offer you a product like that, right? It's lucrative all around for everybody. Tommy Kirsch, I think this is where we're going to end off the show. We have more questions, but Tommy Kirsch says, how much is the monthly fee after a 30-day trial? Tommy here is basically asking Maddie about what we got going on at Crypto Charge. I thought this would be, you know, he asked, so I'm like, okay, let's end off hey, the show enough. on this. So give it to him. Sure. So uh, if you guys go to the site, um, what you're going to see, you're going to see a couple different pricings. You're actually going to see three different pricing options. So you're going to see a monthly plan, you're going to see a quarterly plan, and you're going to see a yearly plan. I have absolutely nobody who ever uses the quarterly plan. It is always either they're here to test things out for the month or they're there for a couple months and they're like, nope, sign me up for that annual plan. I don't want to waste any money that I don't have to. I want to get as much value as this program as I can. So when you go to checkout, you're going to see some codes at the top there, and those are not even the best codes. I want you guys to make sure you're using code YouTube. If you use the codes launch at the top, you're going to get a much smaller discount. If you use code YouTube, you get 50% off any membership. So for that monthly, it's going to come out to $49 a month. If you guys choose the yearly option, it comes out to $4.99 a year, which comes out to basically $41-ish per month. Um, so you guys do save almost nine, 10 bucks a month by going with that annual option. Um, and again, that 30-day free trial comes with either option. So again, it's probably better for you guys to sign up for the annual, to have your 30 days and day 29, you're like, hey, this isn't for me, no problem. But if you enjoy it and you're enjoying what's happening you know, on day 29, might as well save yourself that extra money, be a crypto charge member for a year. Um, you know, Most of the people who end up sticking with us for longer periods of time get more out of our program because again, you know, we're, we're always trying to get you guys up to speed. We're always trying to give you guys as much value as we can through the live streams. But that repeated exposure to this type of information over and over again, in addition to having the support in the Discord, having the uh, you know constant ongoing sessions in the Discord about teaching you guys about how to do technical analysis, um, the, the learning center that's constantly having new information added to it. Uh, as we add new assets, we're putting those in the coin library. It's information that's not just, hey, we're trying to give you a crash course and buy my course, you know, and, and you'll become rich. That's not what I'm telling you guys. <laughs> the goal of our pricing is to make it affordable for you guys to stick with us and to have the ongoing educational support, right? When you look at the cost of a college program, right, even if you were to go to your community college and get really, really good pricing, our course for the entire year with ongoing support is exponentially less than the materials in a single course you would spend at a community college, even if it's something that you just wanted to learn a little bit about, right? So I'd recommend you guys at least check out our program, 30 days free, Code YouTube gets 50% off any membership you're choosing. Matt, we have a couple of minutes here. I just wanted to tell you something because I told you this way back when it happened, but it's funny how you brought up college. And honestly, t team, these people have no idea what they're talking about. I remember one time in class, Matt, uh, my professor was talking, he brought up Bitcoin out of nowhere. And Bitcoin was at its all-time high. It was in 2021. And he was like, hey, what do you guys think? Should I buy some? He's like one of those teachers that, you know, loves talking <laughs> about stuff. He's like, hey, guys, what do you think? Should I buy some Bitcoin? And I start shaking my head. And this other guy across the class was like, and I'm like, <laughs> and I really wanted him to ask, but I didn't want to like, you know, show him up. But I was like, dude, you're going to buy the Pico top of Bitcoin right. right now. And you think that's a good idea? So it's like these people have no idea. These people get into, and you'll see this a lot within our comment section or in general on TikTok. It's like, you can buy Bitcoin whenever. And you know, and you'll be fine. Because guess what? Bitcoin 10 years from now, it's like, your time horizon is 10 years from now. What about now? <laughs> what about compounding your gains and building right. your your crypto portfolio? And it's like, you're going to bet 10 years now? It's like, that is just not a, a sound strategy for all of us here. I'm going to be honest. It's not good for building your portfolio and looking 10 years into the future. And those are typically the people that leave their coins on exchange. And then like, you know, a couple years ago, the exchanges go down. So it's like, that's not a sound investor. That's a really hands off, you know, buy it once, never think about it until 10 years. When we're here, hands on every single day, and most of you don't need to be on every single day. It's like a couple times a week. If you're really interested in this, and if, you know, we got a lot of like diehards in the Discord that love talking about crypto every day, morning and night, because it is interesting and it is good tech and it is a good asset class to invest in. So I just wanted to get that little spiel right there because it kind of correlated to what you're talking about there, Matt. Uh, anything to leave the team with here? 
Uh, you know, you guys want to make sure you got your side or signed up for our program before Friday, though, because we do technical tune up Friday every Friday. So right here, we did a great, you know, Casper analysis for you guys. You guys have your picks that you guys want to see, you know, charter for you guys. You're going to have to wait a whole week for us to come back on the Ask Maddie show. And we do have to kind of pick, you know, which questions we take. So if you guys want to see something charted, um, right now or whatever when we have this coming friday session um make sure you guys are in the discord before that happens again that 30-day free trial does get you discord access immediately so within those 30 days you get to you know take advantage of that so i would really encourage you guys to at least come out see what we're about and uh get some of your picks charted for you guys team if you got alpha from this make sure you like the video leave a comment of what you liked and we will see you guys either on the shows in the discord or if you are just a subscriber here, we'll see you next week on After Hours and the Ask Maddie Show. But until next time, team, bye.